Good evening. Welcome to this edition of the 401 Talks on Radio Show. My name is Leon Jones. Tonight's topic, I'm going to talk about PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. That's right. Tonight's topic is going to be about post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, a number of us have heard the term, and if you've been in any traumatic events such as a war, a car accident, or even 9-11, what happens is you tend to relive the event just after it happened, or it could be years after it happened. Now, PTSD does lead to other symptoms such as depression. It could also lead to suicide. One thing that individuals must understand about PTSD is it is a disease. It is treatable. But one must know the definition of PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. So what is PTSD? Well, PTSD is a disorder that develops in some people who have experience a shocking, a scary, or even a dangerous event. It is natural to feel afraid during and after a traumatic situation. Fear triggers many split-second changes in the body to help defend the danger or even to avoid it. This fight-or-flight response is a typical reaction meant to protect a person from harm. Nearly everyone will experience a range of reactions after the trauma, yet most people recover from the initial symptoms naturally. Those who continue to experience problems may be diagnosed with PTSD. People who have PTSD may feel stressed or frightened even when they're not in danger. Also, paranoia could develop. Now, with any disorder, there are signs and symptoms. Not Every traumatized person develops ongoing or chronic or even short-term or acute PTSD. Not everyone with PTSD has been through a dangerous event. Some experiences, like the sudden unexpected death of a loved one, can also cause PTSD. Symptoms usually begin early, within three months of the traumatic incident. But sometimes they begin years afterwards. Symptoms must last more than a month and be severe enough to interfere with relationships or work to be considered PTSD. The course of illness varies. Some people recover within six months, while others have symptoms that last much longer. In some people, the condition begins or it becomes chronic. It begins as chronic and it will become chronic. Now, You have professionals who can help candidates with PTSD. A doctor is one of them. A doctor who has experience helping people with mental illnesses, such as a psychiatrist or psychologist, can diagnose post-traumatic stress disorder. To be diagnosed with PTSD, an adult must have the following Symptoms for at least one month, at least one re-experiencing system, at least one avoidance symptom, at least two arousal and reactivity symptoms, at least two cognition and mood symptoms. Now, when we talk about re-experiencing symptoms, we look at flashbacks. Reliving the trauma over and over, including physical symptoms like a racing heart or sweating, bad dreams, frightening thoughts. Re-experiencing symptoms may cause problems in a person's everyday routine. The symptoms can start from the person's thoughts and feelings. Words, objects, or situations that are reminders of the event can also trigger re-experiencing symptoms. symptoms. Avoidance symptoms they include staying away from places, events, or objects that are reminders of the traumatic experience, avoiding thoughts or feelings related to the traumatic event. Things that remind a person of the traumatic event can trigger avoidance symptoms. Again, 
Some people stay away from places, events, or objects that remind them of what took place. Now, these symptoms can cause a person to change his or her personal routine. For example, after a bad car accident, a person who usually drives may avoid driving or riding in a car. I also have feelings of arousal. Arousal comes from being easily startled, feeling tense or on the edge, having difficulty sleeping, having angry outbursts. Arousal symptoms are usually constant. Instead of being triggered by things that remind us of the traumatic event, these symptoms can make a person feel stressed and angry. They make it hard to do daily tasks such as sleeping, eating, or concentrating. Now, the cognition and mood symptoms include trouble remembering key features of the traumatic event, negative thoughts about oneself or the world, distorted feelings like guilt or blame, loss of interest in enjoyable activities. Now, cognition and mood symptoms can worsen after the traumatic event, but are not due to injury or substance Use. These symptoms can make a person feel alienated or detached from friends or family members. It is natural to have some symptoms after a dangerous event. Now, sometimes people can have very serious symptoms that go away after a few weeks. This is called an acute stress disorder or ASD. When the symptoms last more than one month, seriously affect one's ability to function and are not due to substance use, medical illness, or anything except the event itself, they might be diagnosed with PTSD. Now, some people with PTSD don't show any symptoms for weeks or even months. PTSD is often accompanied by, of course, depression, substance abuse, or one of the anxiety disorders. Now, again, when we talk about PTSD, there are other disorders that I talked about in previous videos. Of course, stress and anxiety disorders and depression are three of them. And if you look at it, all of these disorders, they connect to each other. And when not treated, they can be fatal. Now, when we talk about people, do ch children react differently from adults? Children and teens can have extreme reactions to trauma, but other symptoms may not be the same as they are in adults. In very young children, basically less than six years of age, these symptoms include wetting the bed after, learn, after learning how to use the toilet. That's right, wetting the bed after having learned to use the toilet, forgetting how to or being unable to talk, acting out during playtime, being usually clingy with a parent or another adult. Older children and teens are more likely to show symptoms similar to those seen in adults. They may also develop disruptive, disrespectful, or destructive behaviors. Older children and teens may feel guilty for not preventing injury or deaths. They may also have thoughts of revenge. Now, for additional information, please visit the National Institute of Mental Health. Right. You can find all their information on their website. And the information is very good. I suggest individuals download it and read it because mental health issues are real. A lot of us who don't have them need to understand them because you never know. We're all human and we could suffer through a traumatic event. And we're going to need support because with any disorder, there are also risk factors. Again, anyone can develop PTSD at any age. This includes war veterans, children, and people who have been through a physical, sexual abuse, assault, accident, disaster, or any other serious events. Now, according 
to the National Center for PTSD, about seven or eight out of every 100 will experience PTSD at some time in their lives. Women are more likely to develop PTSD more than men, and genes may make some people more likely to develop PTSD than others. Now, not everyone with PTSD has been through a dangerous or traumatic event. Some may develop PTSD after a friend or family member experiences danger or harm. The sudden or unexpected death of a loved one can lead to PTSD. Well, why do some people develop PTSD and others don't? You must understand this. It is important to remember that everyone who lives through a dangerous event develops PTSD. In fact, most people will not develop this disorder. Many factors play, in a, play a part in whether a person will develop PTSD or not. Some examples that people must understand when it comes to PTSD. Everybody doesn't react to death or trauma the same way. That's why PTSD affects others and you have some that aren't affected. But it doesn't mean the ones who don't have the PTSD aren't affected. Now, you do have risk factors and resilience factors for PTSD. And some of the factors include living through dangerous events and traumas, getting hurt, seeing another person hurt or seeing a dead body, childhood trauma, feeling horror, helplessness, or extreme fear, having little or no social support after the event, dealing with extra stress after the event, such as a loss of a loved one, pain, an injury, or loss of job or home, having a history of mental illness or substance abuse. Now, some resilient factors that may reduce the risk of PTSD. And the big one, it's seeking support from other people, such as friends and family. Finding a support group after a traumatic event. Learning to feel good about one's actions in the face of danger. Having a positive coping strategy or a way of getting through the bad event and learning from it. Being able to act and respond effectively despite feeling fear. Of course, researchers are studying the importance of these and other risk and resilient factors, including genetics and neurobiology. With more research, someday it may be possible to predict who is likely to develop PTSD and to prevent it. Now, there are treatments and therapies just like everything else. The main treatments for people with post-traumatic stress disorder are medications, psychotherapy, or talk therapy, or even both. Everyone is different, and PTSD affects people differently. So a treatment works for one person, it may not work for another. That's right. A treatment works for one person, may not work for another. So it is important for everyone with PTSD to be treated by a mental health provider who is experienced with PTSD. Some people with PTSD need to try different treatments to find what works for their symptoms. If someone with PTSD is going through an ongoing trauma, such as being in an abusive relationship, both of the problems need to be addressed. Other ongoing problems can include panic disorder, depression, substance abuse, and feeling suicidal. Of course, talk to you about the medications. The most studied medications for treating PTSD include antidepressants, which may help control PTSD symptoms such as sadness, worry, anger, and feeling numb inside. Antidepressants and other medications may be prescribed along with psychotherapy. Other medications that may be helpful for specific PTSD symptoms, for example, although it is not currently FDA approved, research has shown that uh, praises in may be helpful. That's praises in. 
That's for people with sleep problems, particularly with nightmares. And that's commonly experienced by people who have PTSD. Of course, nightmares and sleeping are also factors of reliving the trauma that took place. Doctors and patients can work together to find the best medication or medication combination as well as the right dose. So check the U.S. Food and Drug Administration website, which is http colon double backslash www.fda.gov for the latest information on patient medical guides, warnings, or newly approved medications. Now, as I told you before, talked about psychotherapy. Psychotherapy, sometimes called talk therapy, involves talking with a mental health professional to treat the mental illness. Psychotherapy can occur one-on-one -on -one or in a group. Talk therapy treatment for PTSD usually lasts 6 to 12 weeks, but it can last longer. Now, research shows that support from family and friends can be an important part of the recovery. Many types of psychotherapy can help people with PTSD. Some types target the symptoms of PTSD directly. Other therapies focus on the social, family, or job-related problems. The doctor or therapist may combine different therapies depending on each person's needs. Effective psychotherapies tend to emphasize a few key components, including education about the symptoms, teaching skills, to help identify the triggers of symptoms and skills to manage the symptoms. One helpful form of therapy is called cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. Now CBT can include exposure therapy. This helps people face and control their fear. It gradually exposes them to the trauma they experience in a safe way. It uses imaging, writing, and visiting the place where the event happened. The therapist uses the tools to help people with PTSD cope with their feelings. Now you have cognitive restructuring. This helps people make sense of the bad memories. Sometimes people remember the event differently than how it happened. They may feel guilt or shame about something that is not their fault. The therapist helps people with PTSD look at what happened in a realistic way. There are other types of treatment that can help as well. People with PTSD should talk about the treatment options with a therapist. Treatment should equip individuals with the skills to manage their symptoms and help them participate in activities that they enjoyed before developing PTSD. Now, how talk therapies help people overcome PTSD? Talk therapies or psychotherapists teach people helpful ways to react to the frightening events that trigger their PTSD symptoms based on their general goal. Different types of therapy may teach about trauma and its effects, use relaxation and anger control skills, provide tips for better sleep, diet, and exercise habits, help people identify and deal with the guilt alone or loneliness and other feelings about the event. Focus on how changing or focus on changing how people react to their PTSD symptoms. For example, therapy helps people face the reminders of their, Trump, uh, of their trauma. Let me go back over that again. When you deal with psychotherapy, psychotherapy, and this is a big one, it focuses on changing how people react to their PTSD symptoms. For example, the therapy will help people face reminders of the trauma. And sometimes you got to go back and relive it in order to talk about it. Now, beyond treatment, how can a person help themselves? Well, it is very hard to take the first step to help yourself. So it's important to realize that although it may take some time with the treatment, you can get better. If you are unsure about where to go, ask your family doctor, or you can also check the Help for Mental Illness page or search online for mental health providers. And that's on the NIMH website. And when I'm talking about health care providers or mental health providers, social services, hotlines or physicians, uh, for phone numbers and addresses, an emergency room, doctor can also provide temporary help 
It can, it can also tell you where you can get further help. Now, help yourself while in treatment. Talk to your doctor about treatment options. Engage in mild physical activity or exercise to help reduce stress. Set realistic goals for yourself. Break up large tasks into small ones. Set some priorities and do what you can. That's right. Do what you can as you can. So, in other words, you must be proactive. Try to spend some time with other people. Confide in a trusted friend or relative. Tell others about things that may trigger symptoms. Expect your symptoms to improve gradually, not immediately. Now, identify and seek out comforting situations, places, and people. Caring for yourself and others is especially important when large numbers of people are exposed to traumatic events such as natural disasters, accidents, and violent acts. Now, you have other steps. So I'm going to give you the next steps you should take when you research PTSD. Now, in the last decade, progress and research on the mental and biological foundations of PTSD has led scientists to focus on better understanding of the underlying causes of why people experience a range of reactions to trauma. Now, NIMH funded researchers to explore trauma patients in acute care settings to better understand the changes that occur in individuals whose symptoms improve naturally. Other research is looking at how fear Memories are affected by learning, changes in the body, or even sleep. Research on preventing the development of PTSD soon after trauma exposure is underway. Still, other research is attempting to identify what factors determine whether someone with PTSD will respond well to one type of intervention or another. Aiming to develop more personalized, effective, and efficient treatments. That's right. You've got to manage PTSD and that goes with any symptom because the more proactive and educated you are, the easier it is going to be for one to be relieved of this disorder. Now, as gene research and brain imaging technologies continue to improve, scientists are more likely to be able to pinpoint when and where in the brain PTSD begins. This understanding may lead to better targeted treatments to suit each person's own needs or even prevent disorders before they cause harm. That's right. When it comes to any disorder, disorders lead to anxiety, stress, which stress causes high blood pressure, strokes, it can be suicidal, it can lead to substance abuse. What I'm trying to point out is the information that I am presenting in this video is information that could give every one of us an understanding about post-traumatic stress disorder. And I'm going to tell you, you can even watch a movie on the television and relive what takes place in a movie. Some of us can also relive light PTSD. Like if we slammed our finger in the car or we broke a finger, we can relive those moments. The object, when it comes to PTSD, you want to manage it and you want to treat it, but you as the individual must seek the help, and you do need support of friends and family, along with teachers, doctors, psychologists, psychotherapists, because it takes a village to raise a child, but it also takes a village to cure people as well, because we have professionals who are experienced at understanding the symptoms of PTSD. So what one must do is be smart. 
learn all of the symptoms. That's right. Learn all of the symptoms. Understand the mitigating risk. And once you do that, get educated on post-traumatic stress disorder. Why? Because it could happen to you. And when that time comes, you will know how to face PTSD because you will have all the resources that will help you get through post-traumatic stress disorder. And that's my commentary for this edition of the 401 Talk Zone radio show for this evening, hump day, Wednesday, May 3rd, 2017. You can tune into the 401 Talk Zone radio show every Saturday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Blog Talk Radio. In fact, this Saturday's show is going to be on this very topic that I presented on post-traumatic stress disorder. You don't want to miss that show. So if you want to participate, the guest call-in number is 215-383-5785. If you want to get on the air, hit number one. And I will put you on the air. And if you like my videos, please share and subscribe to the 401 Talk Zone radio show right here on YouTube so I can continue to give you quality information for educational purposes from a professional and mature perspective. Now, on this channel, I don't engage in debates, controversy, or emotional issues, nor do I participate in drama or unnecessary bickering. Why? Because it's counterproductive. This channel is for educational purposes only. And my job is to give you the information from a realistic but positive perspective. Because if you don't have the tools to survive in the real world, you will fail. And it's very tough if you try everything utilizing trial and error. So, if you're smart, call all your friends and family to the 401 Talk Zone radio show to get this realistic and positive information. Why? Because knowledge is power. If you have a business or topic or a new YouTube channel that you would like for me to discuss on YouTube or Blog Talk Radio, simply email me at lej6521 at gmail.com. And if you have a comment, please leave your comment in the comment section under the video, but make sure that your comments are pithy, no bloviating, pettifogging, or filibustering, if you wish to opine. Now, that's it for this video. Till next time, my name is Leon Jones. Remember, please be gentle and respectful to each other, and have a wonderful and blessed evening. Good night.